Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Victor Oliver. I'm the editor of the Astrological Journal. I've been, actually been editor for 10 years, which I can scarcely believe I've been there that long, but I'm, I'm enjoying it as much as I ever did. And today, I'm not here to talk about journal, but about a whole new venture that the Astrological Association is publishing, and it's called Stella. Um, Stella Magazine, that's S-T-E-L-L-A-R, um, is free. And it's also a multimedia entity. Uh, in fact, you'll find uh, in the next few weeks, there'll be loads of links all over social media. You just click through the link and you're at Stella Magazine. Um, I say it's a multimedia entity. It will contain video content, podcasts, things like that. Not just editorial, but also advertising. And we're encouraging astrologers to use Stella as a platform to promote their book or their event or themselves or a service, uh, their website. Uh, it's paid advertising, but I think you'll find that our ad rates are highly competitive. Now, the great thing about Stella is that it's pretty portable. So the print versions actually in the September, October issue of the Astrological Journal, but it's actually going to develop as an online publication. It will grow independent of journal. So maybe in a year's time, the 12 pages, which is a modest start, could become 20, 30, you never know, maybe 40 pages. It much depends on how much advertising we can attract to the entity. The thing to bear in mind, whether you're a reader or an advertiser, is that thousands and thousands of people will be reading the publication, partly because it's free, but also because it's so easily accessible. And in another sense, you're gonna find that the content is very accessible too. It's as serious as journal about astrology. It's not gonna simplify or make it crass or anything like that. But we do recognize that in the internet age, when our lives are so dominated or influenced by social media, that we have to recognize that we need to talk to people in a different way. We're not saying that, that essays are wrong, that in-depth analysis is wrong or anything like that. We're just saying that there's a vast global audience out there looking for, shall we say, information that's more digestible and accessible than is often the case with some publications. And the hope is that people who come to Stella will then think about joining the Astrological Association. You become, you can become a, an associate member for nothing. But some of you may want to become full members and take full advantage of all the services that we offer at the AA. For example, on the website, if you're a member, you can access the archive. Uh, it's an archive of magazines, um, not just the Astrological Journal, but Correlation, which is a research publication edited by Robert Curry. And then we have the um, Astrology and Medicine newsletter edited by Wanda Seller, which takes us into um, medical astrology or decumbiture, as it's technically known. Um, it, it's also a very accessible magazine. So in a sense, Stella is a portal into a whole new world. And we hope that you can be engaged. It doesn't matter at what level you are. One of the things we've noticed, uh, particularly with other astrology businesses, is that this vast global audience is not always being tapped in a way that, um, shall we say, is acceptable to a modern readership. Um, and we know that there are different levels of interest. For example, there are the obvious professionals like myself, that you've got the scholars as well. But there's also a large number of people who have a serious interest in astrology, but don't actually practice it. They follow it. Uh, one day they may actually learn it. I certainly recommend that you look at the, the, the astrology schools around, the Hogwarts schools, if you want to call them that. Um, but the thing about Stella is that it will make the subject far more accessible. And to give you just a few examples, like in the, the first, the debut issue of Stella, we're profiling the, the pop star Dua Lipa. Uh, she's an interesting sun leer. That's a very strong sun. She has a great need for the spotlight, for the creative output. But she's also got a very strong moon in cancer. Um, and that, therefore, also links her to the past, to the need for her own space. Uh, and Alison Bolton, uh, a, a well-known astrologer, analyzes the dynamics of Dua Lipa's life. That actually reminds me of something I wanted to say about Stella, that we're very much into the personal side of astrology. Um, if you get a bit too academic about the subject, and there's nothing wrong about that, um, 
you can forget that astrology is also about the individual, about what their soul purpose may be, or their life purpose, things like that. There's so much can be told through astrology. Then we've got Constance Sellers, who's talking about the US Supreme Court. And she's made an interesting discovery. I mean, it's a slightly irreverent piece because she's also playing on the idea of the Supremes, the, the girl group of the 1960s. Um, and she's sort of making an interesting link between the band and the Supreme Justices. Um, but the point she makes is that if you look at all nine justices' horoscopes, they perhaps lack emotional empathy. Is it possible? Anyway, she's putting that forward as an argument. There's going to be regular, what I call fast features. Uh, we look at the lunar cycles, for example, the new moons, the, the, the full moons, the eclipses. And we're not afraid to go into a bit of depth about the eclipses. Um, each eclipse is linked to a Seros series. Um, we'll be explaining what that is. But if you understand which number of the Seros series an eclipse belongs to, whether it's a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, then um, you would get a better understanding of what it signifies. And also we're explaining what certain technical terms mean, like the quincunx in this particular issue. I'm not gonna go into that now, but just read it. It's, it's fast stuff. And we also have fast synastry, looking at the relationship between Meghan and Harry. It's all bite-sized chunk stuff. We don't write a 3000 word article about it. What we've done is to, in a sense, reduce the subject into a digestible form. Of course, if you're serious about astrology, you may want to look at the charts yourself. Um, we also profile Marcus Patchett, a highly esteemed medical herbalist and astrologer, and you can learn much more about that young astrologer, yeah? So there's so much here. Once you're in Stella, you'll see all the signposts that take you to different things, to the membership area, to journal itself, if you want to buy a copy of that. Um, otherwise, you can just visit Stella when you like. Um, technically, it will be updated every two months, but in practice, it'll be updated more frequently. Um, for example, if there's a big news event, uh, we'll put something up about that. Um, and also, we'll be updating with podcasts. So if, as an astrologer, you want to um, uh, record something about yourself, about a book, or about your website, or something like that, talk to us, and then we can talk about a price, and then we can post that immediately. And remember, because the magazine is free, you're going to be open to thousands and thousands of readers. The readership will be very high, it'll be much, much more than journals. Journal is still essentially a membership magazine. Journal remains as it is, um, but we are using journal as a launch pad for Stella. Um, it, you may only wanna read Stella, that's great. Be my guest, enjoy it. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, email me um, through the journal or through the website, the Astrological Association, and I will be posting more videos over the next few weeks, talking about Stella, but also talking about journal and various other things. Basically, the Astrological Association is um, now launching a series of initiatives to reach a global audience, and I hope you can be part of our growing family. Thanks for joining me.